Next question is from Megan Mack. How do you and your partners hand, handle fear and anxiety around topics you can't control that affect your children and their f- future? Oh, man, this, this has really changed for me a lot. Um, you battled this the most, I think, right? Well, uh, what, personally, like yeah. my fear and anxieties? Yeah, but no, this is talking about, I guess, how you handle the fear and anxiety for your kids. Like, yeah, it's the same thing. It's you're getting the anxiety because of what could possibly happen to your kids. Is that my reading? Oh that no, yeah. So I was interpreting it like how to handle your kids' anxiety. When no, I think things. this is like, for example, I think this is alluding to like COVID nineteen and what's happening oh, to them. Yeah. And like how much fear and anxiety you guys have, knowing that it's impacting their lives. Yeah, so. So that's oh, that's rough, man. I'll hmm. tell you what. I don't care how tough you are. You you start to picture your own child's uh, challenges and stuff. That'll definitely mess you up. Uh, well. Number one is acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge that you have these fears um, around uh, you know, certain things. And then you should probably talk to somebody. I, I think if you don't, um, and what I mean by is it could be a partner, it could be a friend. If you don't, what tends to happen, at least what happens with me, is I can, I can, it, it'll mull around in my head. Mm. And it becomes obsessive. And I can think about something that can build upon it. Or you could stuff it, in which case it comes out uh, in different ways. So I'll talk about certain things with, with, with Jessica, for example. She's an excellent partner to talk about these types of things about. This is a 100% a communication thing with your partner, period. Like, And this is, if you're human, this will happen to you. It's just the people that are self-aware about it and recognize it when it when it rears itself. Like, uh, we just, I mean, beginning of this episode, we talked about, you know, the self-awareness thing that I, that I pr- try and practice. And this is no different. Like, you know, here's mine. Uh, and this is very recent that we had something like this where um, could, Katrina, and I, I might have shared this on the podcast, uh, but it fits for this this question, is I am, I'm so afraid, okay, or I get anxiety around not having enough adversity in my son's life because I know how much it served me to getting to where I am at, and I now look back, and I'm appreciative of all the adversity that I had growing up, uh, and and think it was a very important role to developing a lot of characteristics about myself that I want my son to have. And my Katrina is completely opposite. She had a very successful childhood. She's very successful in life, and they did it with a complete opposite approach. Lots of love, lots of support. And, and comfort and and there for each other. And and she's been very successful for it. She's very independent too. And so we are very, I'm challenged here where there'll be times where, you know, she does something where I feel like I'd let him struggle a little bit. I know he's a baby and stuff like that, but it's like, it, this is, it starts now, right? Is it, doesn't it start now? I mean, it's, it's, at what, what age do you start letting them be challenged a little bit and she's so quick to rescue him? And then to her, I'm so quick to let him struggle on everything. And she's mm-hmm. like, damn, he's a fucking baby. Let, you know, pick him up and love him. Change you know your saying? own diaper. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is an area that we, we, we don't see eye to eye. I have anxiety over it that I, I, my biggest fear is that he, he turns out to be a, a spoiled little kid because I gave him too much uh, growing up and didn't show him enough adversity. Mm-hmm. And so it just it's communication uh, and, and we have to have dialogue around it. And the, the great thing about both her and I is that we do have that level of self-awareness that I, I recognize that it's my issue. If you have anxiety about something with your child, it has nothing to do with the, the thing that you can't control and has nothing to do with them and has everything to do with you and your insecurities around that topic. And that's where the work needs to be done on yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't control the uncontrollable. COVID-19, nobody can control that. You can't you, you can't control how your kid is going to respond to it. Only you can control the anxiety that you get from it. And, and it comes from something within that is normally rooted in something deeper. And so that communication with your partner and yourself is, I think, where the work is done to get through situations like this. Yeah. I have very similar, uh, very similar uh, w- with me and Courtney in terms of like us being sort of polar opposites uh, for certain things, like especially with fear. Um, and this this was a lot harder when she was working in the pediatric environment uh, where she's a pediatric nurse. Uh, and every day she would see the worst case scenario of how something would play out with, with a child where they mm-hmm. would fall out of a window. They weren't wearing a helmet. Uh, you know, they got into a car crash, like all these things. Um, 
she would, uh, you know, inevitably bring that kind of energy home. And I would have to talk her down through all these scenarios just to let our kids ride their bikes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or like just to like go out in, uh, you know, at a park and, and not be worried about uh, everybody's colds, diseases, whatever else, you know, bacterias that are out there to get us and, and harm us. Uh, but at the same time, um, I had a moment where, um, you know, I, 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 I was so disconnected with, from that fear uh, where I'm sleeping soundly like a rock and just the, the, the faintest noise sparked Courtney to get up you know, run downstairs, and and my son was was choking on a, a marble. Oh, I remember this. And oh. like I I cannot I cannot shake that. That that's something that I am so glad that she had that instinct in that in you know. And so it's it's tough because it it's like you know you you can't be completely. Uh, oblivious to the fact that it's a signal. Like there, there is real things out there to consider. How much do you, how much do you water that though? How much do you, uh, you know, invite that uh, to dictate how you make your decisions and how much can you really control? So, um, it, you know, it, it's a, it's a balance. I feel for, for parents that are, are single uh, and trying to raise children oh. and, and do, deal with that fact and not have a balance uh, from that, because I, I really do lean on her uh, from those types of scenarios because I don't want to run my life going forward and providing and doing all these things and taking risks with with that kind of pulling me uh, super hard the other direction. Yeah, no, that's a great, it's almost like, I mean, obviously, you know, it takes two people to make a kid and it's like they balance each other out oftentimes where one is too far in one way, yeah. others too far, if they were by themselves, probably not a good idea. Right. But then together. And I think that's the answer to this question is, is, is you, you know, how do we work it out with our partners or handle that with our partners is, is appreciate your partner for being the opposite of you. You know, no matter what side yeah. you're probably on, you're probably going to go too far. Without right. Them. And, and so, and that's Katrina and I like, you know, she, and I, hopefully he ends up being an amazing kid because he gets a great balance, right? He gets yeah. a, a dad who manufactures adversity, you know, to make sure that he has some challenges and he has a loving mother who's there to support and save him when needed. And so, you know, hopefully he ends up being this incredible kid that gets both sides of that. And you have to embrace it. I think we're, you have one, you have challenges as if you're a single parent. I mean, I, I can't imagine that. Or if you're, uh, you know, the headstrong person in, in the relationship and you decide your way or the highway and then you, the other person just folds, like, I don't think that's healthy either. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's a reason for that push pull and, and you can use it to yeah. your benefit. Yeah. And I, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I interpreted this, like, how do you handle your kids fear and anxiety? And I was, I was going to say, that's such a different, uh, I, I have such a different approach with that now than I than I used to, where if my kids were really scared about something that I perceived as being like irrational, be like oh don't be afraid, it's not a big deal or whatever. Yeah, you just dismiss it. Yes, and I I, I realized uh, more rather relatively recently, you got to let them have their feelings. Yeah, they have to let them process their feelings. Oh, you were scared. How, why, Same I, lesson, dude. Yeah, how did you? So how did that feel? What was that like? And let them process out their feelings so that they can honor it because. When you dismiss it, they, they'll probably think, okay, well, this is not an accurate feeling. I can just stuff it or mm -hmm. dad is not the person to go talk to. W totally different than the way I used to handle it in the past.